I think Borges may have broken me. Let's get to it. <laughs> I'm Sandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a thousand and one book countdown for you. Uh, it has been an interesting couple of weeks um, and I've been in a little bit of a reading kind of slump. May or may not be related to what I've been reading for the countdown. Uh, but first of all, if you're not familiar with the thousand and one book countdown, I will put a card up here for you where you can go and check out the original video. But basically I'm reading books off of the thousand and one books you must read before you die list and slowly waking, making my way through through that massive set of books. I made it, of course, bigger for myself because I combined all editions together, which was actually 1,300 books, and then started documenting my, my progress when I got close to around 1,001 out here on YouTube. And it is it has been a passion project of mine for a number of years, and I'm so happy I started documenting everything out here because I've made so much more progress through my massive project once I started out here on YouTube. So consider giving me a subscribe and sticking around and seeing how far I make it through my thousand and one list. But for today, what we will go ahead and do is put up the numbers, which are 876. That's how many I have left of the 1300 books. And I have to look because I always forget 37. So every year at the beginning of the year, I pre-select 52 books and try and work focus on those. It seems easier to me to have a smaller number to work through. Every year I try and get that number down to zero, have not been successful. Successful. This is my third year, third attempt. We'll see how I do, but I'm officially behind. And what I have left of that is 37. So yeah, it's a, it's been interesting <laughs> that this 52 list this year, it's like I've been reading everything but what's on the 52 list. So I don't know. But today's book, the first book that I'm going to talk about is actually a pair of books. And both books are on the countdown, which is really interesting. Um, and I'll talk through what why that is. It's really reading Borges, and in particular, Ficciones and also Labyrinths, um, short stories, essays, and parables. So I'll hold up this one because this is the one that I own. Uh, both of these books, the reason why I'm going to talk about them together is that there are all, most of the stories that are in Labyrinths, or sorry, that are in Ficciones are in Labyrinths as well. There's only five stories that are in this one that are not in Labyrinths. And then Labyrinths has a bunch of essays and parables and other stories that aren't in this one. So if you're wondering, okay, do I read Ficciones or I read Labyrinths? I would say read Labyrinths because Labyrinths has far more in it. Interestingly, the stories are in a different order in the two versions of the book or sorry, in the two different Infixiones and Labyrinths. So I'm not sure if that was intended to be that way or if there was a reason why they were published in a certain order in this one and then changed in Labyrinths. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so this book, Ficciones, was originally published in 1941-1944, uh, somewhere around there. It wasn't published in English until 1962. And Borges, these short stories, the reason why I said in my opening that I think Borges broke me is there is a lot going on in these short stories. Uh, there's a lot to kind of digest. We had originally, I'm doing this as a buddy read with Dia over at Novel Idea and Tiffany at Beautiful Minutia. And there's a lot to, we had originally started saying, oh, we'd read three stories a day. And it quickly became apparent that three stories of Borges was a lot to try and mentally consume in a day. And it was one of those things that certain stories were very you know, story-like and other ones just had a big deep dive in different topics. There were a lot of different um, components to it, a lot of like trying to pull out the hidden meaning, a lot of circular references, labyrinth re references, dreams, things like that. And it's a lot to get wrap your head around. And trying to read three stories a day I just got to the point where I was like, I don't want to read any stories per day. And then it got to the point where I said, I don't want to read anything uh, because I just, it's like my brain just said, this is too much for you right now. I can't focus on this. I just need, you know, something else to read or something to not read. Not to say, what's weird about that though, is it's not like I didn't like the short stories. There were some that I loved. My One of my favorites is called The Garden of the Forking Paths. I really enjoyed that one. There's another one that I don't remember the name of it, where it was this conversation about whether or not he was dreaming and creating someone else, or was he dreaming and creating himself? It was just like, 
a lot though <laughs> for my for me to consume i would say if you want to read this one like i said read labyrinths because there's not a lot more in Fixiones. don't buy both of them i have one digitally and then i have this one in a physical copy i would highly recommend reading it with someone else uh especially i was very fortunate in reading it with dia and with tiffany because wow they added so much to my experience reading this book they were doing amazing job interpreting things and going through it and just really digging deep and pulling it apart and I'm like well okay there is a garden you know I, I mean and I I don't know if it's that I want I need to read more more before I read this or if Borges just isn't an author for me I'm not sure which one I would like to reread some things later maybe when I don't have as much going on in my personal life and can focus on it a little bit more it has been you know a lot going on as well this is a late check-in as well today <laughs> because I've had so much happening, but it is, it is a lot. And, um, it's one that I wish, I wish I understood it more. I do. I wish I understood it more. I do think it's probably, I think it's brilliantly done. I think that there's a lot to get from this book. Did it work for me? Did I understand it? No, no, I definitely didn't understand it. But I'm not saying that this is not worth a read. I think it is absolutely 100% worth a read. Uh, I think it's there's a lot in it. There's a lot to pull out of it. Just go into it knowing that it can be tough. And if you have, a, have the ability to read it with someone who can really kind of deep dive into it it would add to the experience is what i would say but the fun thing with this is because of this book both books this one and labyrinths were, were on the thousand one book list i actually get to count two books so with this one book fixiones and labyrinths we go from i forgot again 876 Fixiones would be 875, and Labyrinths would take me to 874, which is amazing. So I actually carved two books off of my countdown. I'm happy with that. And for the 2023 list, which is currently, which is currently at 37, weirdly, I only had this one, Fixiones, because this is the one that I owned. Um, so that number will go to 36. Uh, I didn't put Labyrinths on on my uh, 52 list this year because I was planning on reading this one. And then when we decided we were doing a buddy read with all of us, uh, Tiffany and Dia had Labyrinths already. So we said, okay, we'd read that. Little did I know, most of the stories were in both. Um, so yeah, or, or most of the stories in Fixiones were in Labyrinths. So that is where my countdown will end this week. I don't have anything else. I am, when I say that Borges broke me, uh, when I think about what I've actually read this month, uh, it is on the day of filming the 17th, and I have finished Lessons in Chemistry, The Sentence, and then the Borges uh, book books. If you want to count, be generous and count two, you could say I completed four, but really I feel like I only completed three in 17 days. And that is very unusual for me. Uh, I typically will read that number of books in a given week uh, or definitely over like 10 day period. So I am feel been feeling very reading slumpy. Uh, I haven't wanted to read a ton and it has been, it has been a challenge. I definitely would say it's been a challenge. What I have that I am, what I have that I'm currently working on, I do have my book club pick, which is this one, Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin. You can see there is a bookmark in here. I'm about a third of the way through. I was really hoping to have this one done for this video and I didn't want to rush it. I am loving the language in this one. Uh, James Baldwin also wrote Giovanni's Room, which was one of my favorite reads, one of my most heartbreaking reads. And I just really want to spend my time working my way through this. So I said, okay, I'm going to stop and I'll just do the two Borges books for this countdown and not try and rush my way through this particular one. The other book that I just started today, which is Americana. Uh, this book I'm reading with Fraser Simon and Novella and my friend Angela. And uh, I'm only through part one and man am I enjoying this book so far I'm really excited to read more of it I can't wait to see where this goes see how we how it progresses um so far it feels like it could be drama e so I'm not sure yet though we'll see with this one so those are the two that I have actively starting or st have started I have another buddy read that starts tomorrow or, or Monday which is going to be with Greg over another bibliophile reads where I'm reading my first Perec novel 
Hopefully that one's <laughs> not as complicated and as difficult as Borges. I don't really want to go into another reading slump. I really don't want to. So that is what I have for you in the countdown. countdown. Have you ever read Borges? Do you have any tips and tricks? I'd certainly love to hear that. Um, it was definitely a good experience. I'm happy that I did it. I'm happy I read it, but I'm also happy there's no more Borges on the countdown for me to read. So if I pick it up again, it'll be just to re-experience those stories. So, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Absolutely. But as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, everyone, thanks. Bye.